Hi, uh, so we're back with the next notebook here, and this is the notebook on regression. Uh, what we will work on here is just building a regression model for a couple of different instances. Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to introduce regression pretty straightforwardly and like ease, like how um, um, in, in a toy example type of setting, how um, regression would manifest. Uh, so here, what I have is just a quick random um, points on a scatter plot uh, of some data that I generated. Um, originally, like the data is uh, three times x value. So like this is y is equal to 3x. Uh, but I also added some uh, random information or random um, perturbation to this data. And the goal would be in this scenario to fit a line into this data. So actually fitting a line is pretty easy to compute uh, via just you can write your own function. Like well, that's one of the uh, easiest things to solve. And like you can come up with uh, if you're trying to solve y is equal to ax plus b, you can look for uh, a and B as you're trying to minimize or as you're trying to find a, uh, a line that fits your data and minimizes the error between uh, the Y values that you are coming up with or the, the Y values between the ones you're uh, predicting and the Y actual values on the uh, plot itself. Uh, so I'm just going to skip this for now and not go into the details, but I just wanted to show you a couple of different ways you can do just basic linear uh, fitting or linear regression on your model. Uh, so here I'm solving uh, A and B. I'm finding the A and B based on the X values and the Y values that I have created here. And I'm just creating new set of Y values based on A and B. So yeah, I'm going to skip this for now and um, we'll, we'll compare everything in just a couple of cells. Uh, so the next thing I wanted to show is another instance where you can call uh, another like NumPy in this case uh, via the PyCall package. Uh, so PyCall allows you to call uh, Python uh, packages uh, from Julia. So here we're going to import NumPy. And once we've imported NumPy, so this new value or variable NP, it's as if we have NumPy in our uh, Julia session. Uh, so we can call np.something, and that would be running the np.something function. Uh, so here, we're actually going to call the polyfit function from um, numpy, so np.polyfit on x data and y data. And so, so far, we've already computed our y new based on our calculations, and now we're going to compute um, the y new 2 based on the uh, Python calculation. And we will see that it's going to be exactly the same line. Um, the third way to do it. Oh, yeah. I forgot that my data are different below. So I haven't actually ran this. So um, I ruined the surprise for later on. <laughs> all right. So here's. All right. Let me go just from the beginning. Um, OK. All right. This is working now. All right, so, so far here, we've plotted two lines, y2 and y3, based on um, uh, the new values we found based on our function and based on the Python function. Uh, next, we're just going to do it with um, Julia. And the way we're going to do it in Julia is via using the JLM, GLM package. Uh, so um, GLM stands for Generalized Linear Models. And here in, in GLM, you can solve uh, regression pretty easily by using the LM function um, linear model, I think, LM, yeah. Uh, so you, you just have to pass a formula. So you would say Y should be in terms of some formula based on X. Uh, so here X and Y are already the names of your columns in this data frame that I just created based on uh, the data. And uh, what's next? Yeah, data is the data frame you pass. So you pass a formula usually and a data frame. And that should just solve this problem. Um, yeah, so um, I think I've already executed it. So it's plotting again. So let me do this again. Okay, perfect. So this is just, just to give you three ways you could really run basic, simple linear regression on uh, your data. And uh, this is a great uh, turning point to move into linear regression just in Julia and using the GLM package. 
So now what we're actually going to work with is an original data set that we saw in uh, one of the uh, one of the earlier notebooks, or I think the data notebook, uh, where we've loaded some information about housing sales uh, from 2008. So here, um, let me see, this might take a little bit of time. So I might just keep it as it is since I have the value R here. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we have it. So here, what I'm going to do is get the sales count. So R is like, think of it as a, a dictionary here. Uh, we're going to get the sales counts. Um, that's the value of the sales counts. And then we're going to convert it to a data frame. And same thing for the month, monthly listings. So this this file actually has multiple sheets, three sheets. I think one of the sheets is on uh, sales uh, counts by, uh, by city, and then the monthly listings by city. So one thing about um, real estate or housing, that's actually something that I learned while I'm doing this tutorial, is uh, one way to kind of measure how, um, how the real estate um, industry is doing in, in a certain region is to measure the ratio of how many uh, houses actually get sold uh, given um, out of the all the houses being listed. So let's say there's a place where there was 100 houses being listed and the 100 houses were sold, like that's pretty good. If the 100 houses were listed and like only 10 were sold, that's not as good. Uh, so that's the kind of um, measurement we're going to actually try and measure for some of these uh, states that we have in this uh, data set. So let's see what's, uh, yeah. So one thing we're actually going to do here is to try and get, um, uh, we're going to create a new data frame for just one specific month, and that is going to be 2020-02. I think that was the last um, listing that I have and that we had in both data sets. Uh, so we're just going to create them based on uh, the first five columns, which are the identifiers of um, the listing we're interested in, and end is the last column. So yeah, that was the last column we had in that data set. And similar thing here, except that we're only going to get the first column because what we're going to do next is combine these two things based on uh, just listings and sales. Uh, so here's where we're going to do it. Okay, great. So what we'll do next is just create this data frame that is really just the February 2020 data. What this is doing is joining the monthly listing of 2020, uh, February, and then the sales counts of 2020-02. And we're going to join them based on region ID. And as you will see, region ID was actually present in both of them based on this identifier number one, column one. And the next thing we will do is actually pick all right so let me um yeah so the counts here are the counts of uh the listings and then the sales are the sales of um the sales column and then the states are the state name so let me actually just copy this and create it like show it here just to show you an idea of yeah so we're trying to just get the listings column and the sales column and um the state name over here all right, so these are the three columns we're interested in. The next thing we will do is we will just have a counter of like how many numbers were a given, um, were a given state, uh, how many times were a given state um, mentioned in this data set. And we're going to select just the top 10 states to just compare these uh, top 10 states. Uh, the reason we're picking these top 10 states is just because we have more data about it. So like if a, if a state was mentioned um, just one time, like I don't know how much information you have, you can build out of, or actually you do need at least two times to, to fit a regression in your regression model. But like if you have two data points, like that's probably not enough information to build like a strong uh, opinion about it. So we're just picking the ones that we're occurring the most in this data. Uh, so th those will be our top states, and then um, yeah. So the states of interest; these are the like these are the actual IDs, and these are the state names. And you will see what we'll we'll do next in just a second. All right. So we set up. We said we're interested in these top ten states that appeared the most. And now what we will do, since we are in a regression notebook, we are gonna uh, plot uh, the sales versus listing of each. Um, county or each region ID in that uh, state and try and find out 
how was each state doing? So this is where things get a little interesting. So here, what we're doing is, uh, so first of all, I'm setting up um, my plotting uh, kind of um, array. So I'm just going to create an array of, it's going to be 10 plots. And now for each state of interest, I am going to find all the times that state of interest appeared in my data frame. And for that data frame, I'm actually just going to compute or extract uh, the counts of those um, IDs and then the sales of those IDs. And then I will fit a linear model to um, this data. Uh, so here I'm fitting, this is my formula, and then the Y value and the X value are in the previous data frame and I'm passing data as a input data to this um, LM uh, function. And then the next thing I will do is for each of these plots, like plot number one, I'm gonna do a scatter plot of everything. So counts and the sales. So counts versus that, sales versus counts. And marker setting a few things that will hopefully make things look a little in reference. So like I'm setting the X limit and the Y limit the same so that I, um, when I look at these figures, eventually I will be able to just immediately see the mappings. Like I don't want one to be zero to 100 and another one zero to 1000. So um, just kind of standardizing things. And then, so this is just a scatter plot. And then the next thing I will do is actually plot a prediction. So these are the actual um, X coordinates and the Y coordinates are gonna be the predictions on this model that we already just created. And we're just gonna plot a line on top of them. And then eventually we will um, splat all of these plots. So we're just gonna unwrap them into, they were 10, a vector of 10. Now they're just gonna be uh, come, like next to each other and the plotting, um, you can do a lot of subplots together in Julia using this plot and then pass whichever plots you wanted. And then the layout is what we're setting here to be two rows by five columns. That's the layout keyword. And then we're just setting a size for this. Um, we're just setting these details here just to make everything a little more like feasible to view and easy to read. Uh, so we're just going to run this and we will find out a few interesting patterns. Uh, we will see that, uh, for instance, um, I think North Carolina is doing the highest uh, slope here. And we can actually look at the slopes over here. Uh, so California has a 0 0.18 slope. Um, Ohio has a 0 0.47 slope. Interesting. Uh, North Carolina has a 0 0.53 slope. So all these things are pretty interesting. The next thing we will do is just to have a better comparison of everything. I will just um, do the same, very similar thing, except that we're gonna overlay everything on top of each other. Uh, so I will skip the details of how we're plotting this because we do have a notebook later about specifically plotting and hopefully it'll touch on like some of the um, keywords that I'm using here. But for now, I'm just gonna execute this and show you everything on top of each other. So here, instead of, um, obviously using 10 plots and just using um, all of them on top of each other and labeling just, I knew that Florida is gonna be the minimum, California kind of midway and North Carolina um, most. So I'm just specifically deciding which ones to annotate. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. North Carolina is doing supposedly best. That is data from February, 2020. So. Uh, that could be different from another month. So you can feel free to try other months. So if there's an incident that you know of that could have affected uh, sales in North Carolina in that month, then that would be a fun experiment to run. All right, so moving on, uh, we will... Um, oh, yeah, I think here... Yeah, we've already done that, so we don't need this cell. All right, so the next thing we'll go all over is logistic regression. And here in logistic regression, one quick reason why logistic regression matters and comes up actually a lot is imagine the scenario where you you're trying to predict um, numbers between zero and one. So your data is like X one through seven and your actual uh, labels are one or zero. So what you will end up having is like dots between zero and one in the actual ground truth data. But then if you're trying to fit a linear model to it, what you will end up with is a line like this. And now someone gives you a value of A and says predict it, and you come up with a value that is like 1.3. And then the person's like, 
what is one point like all these numbers should be between zero and one? Why is it more, like what do I do? What do what do I make out of one point three? So it just doesn't make sense. Uh, so this is just a quick um, idea of why logistic regression matters. Uh, so one way um, logistic regression actually connects to linear regression is uh, this idea of a generalized linear model. So you can actually think of uh, logistic regression as um, you can decide on working on logistic regression as a generalized linear model. And I do strongly recommend reading more on generalized linear models in this Wikipedia link I mentioned here. Uh, but we're just going to skip over the part where why, where I tell you why we use binomial and look at link for a link function and binomial for a family for distributions and refer you to read about it yourself on the uh, either Wikipedia page or if you do just a quick uh, online search, you will realize the um, how uh, logistic regression fits in the generalized linear model scope. Uh, but for now, we're just going to uh, keep going with using the GLM package for uh, logistic regression um, in this data set. So in this data set, we're actually going to use something that will be um, a binary data set, like the the, the values, um, the y values are going to be uh, zeros and ones. And by zeros and ones, we're going to use uh, the sex of these uh, cats here, uh, female versus male. And uh, yeah, we're going to use this um, data set from the R data sets package. Uh, so BWT and HWT are body weight and heart weight, I think. All right, so just a quick um, plotting of these um, uh, cats, just to have an idea of where things fit. So you will see that there's more blue here and more uh, orange here. Uh, so that's one thing to note right away. Uh, so yeah, there might be some, some trend between female and male. Uh, so yeah, so I'll map here. The first one is female and the second one is male. So blue is uh, female and uh, orange is male. So smaller heart weight and body weight seems to be a female and higher seems to be a male. But anyway, so here we're going to try and fit a binomial. Sorry, we're going to try and fit a logistic regression model to this data. And the way we're going to do it is by passing um, so the X values are going to be the heart weight in this case, and then the Y values are going to be just a binary zero or one. And because they're zero or one, we're just going to take CI, which are the indicators of female and male, and subtract one from them because they were one, two, we want them to be zero and one. And then we are going to use the GLM function, and we are going to set binomial in log with link here. And um, if we actually run this, we'll see it turns out to... Um, look a little more than just the line. So it, it does look more uh, realistic here, uh, fitting this data. All right, and also another thing you can see is that it doesn't go beyond one, which we want it. All right, so the last example in this uh, notebook is going to be about nonlinear regression. And here we're going to focus on, say, like we have a set of uh, points that are plotted here as a scatter plot. And the goal is to find a function that fits them. Uh, so here I'm just generating a set of random uh, values, x values, and fitting them to this function, and then adding some random uh, noise to them. Uh, so a scatter plot of them is going to look like this. And then the way to actually run um, the LSQ fit curve fit function is to first of all come up with like a model. So this model is where you're saying, well, if, if you've heard that like we're trying to fit a cubic model, what this means is that we're trying to figure out like a scalar times x cubed, like what would that scalar be? Here we're trying to fit some more complicated function in terms of exponential and sine and whatever. So we decide on what we're trying to fit, what kind of function we're trying to fit. And the numbers we're actually trying to find are these numbers, p of one p of 2 and p of 3. So we're trying to find this vector p uh, that will minimize uh, the least square error. So the curve fit function works as follows. You just have to pass the curve. Uh, this is the curve fit function from LSQ fit. Uh, the model is what you have here. The x data and y data what is what you already have in your data here. So let me actually, these should be, I think, x files and y files. And then P0 is just like an estimate of where to start from in terms of um, 
uh, these p of 1, p of 2, p of 3 that you're trying to find. So if you run this, um, this should give um, the my fit. Uh, and then I think, yeah, here, this is not going to work. I think I just need to do this, yeah. Uh, so here, um, so the reason just to tell you why this wasn't going to work is because this actually generated an error just a second ago. And I, I, I think that's why I uh, disconnected. And that's because um, the fit is actually a function name from another package. And I don't want to, I shouldn't be able to use it here. Uh, so uh, I'm just setting it to be my fit. So I just actually cha changed the value name here. All right, so going back to this, um, my fit is just getting the parameters and then the parameters are storing them in this uh, vector P. So now I'm just calling the same exact model that I had here and just applying it on the X values that I had. And so now I'm just plotting X values and Y values. And then after that, I'm plotting. So first of all, it's a scatter plot. And then second, I'm plotting uh, just the plot over the curve of the x values with the uh, y values we found over here. And as you can see, the, the fit is pretty good. Um, just for fun, I think I'm trying here to do a linear fit. So you can actually do a linear fit from the LSQ fit uh, function. So now this is your fourth way to run a linear regression model. Uh, so let's see this, yeah. Uh, so the linear fit is pretty boring on this data set, but it does show something. I mean, it's going lower, so that is actually true. So that's the best linear fit to this model, but it's obviously nonlinear. And so finally, I hope you can check all of these boxes. And the one cool thing is going back to the regression on the houses data set. Uh, North Carolina seemed to be doing pretty good or seemed to do pretty well in uh, February of 2020. So that's pretty cool. Uh, thank you. I'll see you next in the next no notebook.